Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for this hearing, and um, thank you to, to the witnesses for being here. I would also want to um, thank Congressman Carter for his leadership and partnership on the Global Nuclear Energy Assessment and Cooperation Act. That bill um, would include the training of foreign nuclear energy experts and the establishment of a U.S. International Nuclear Reactor Export and Innovation Branch, which would help ensure we remain the world's leading developer of nuclear energy. Um, from climate change to energy, to energy security, bipartisanship will be essential to tackling our most pressing energy challenges. And I just want to add, for purposes of context, how important transmission will be. And I know the um, chairman wants to get at uh, hearings. I think that's going to be in the fall. Uh, the sooner we can get that conversation going about a strategy for, for, uh, uh, for promoting interregional transmission across the country, I think the better off we'll be in deploying energy uh, security and efficiency and um, better climate policy. Uh, so um, I appreciate the chance today to operate in a bipartisan way and um, hope that we can keep it up. The other point I'd raise is, um, <clears throat> there, you know, we, we have done a yeoman's job in this country about decarbonizing our, planning to decarbonize our uh, economy and to transition to a new energy uh, supply and, and um, cleaner energy supply. But we, we have to recognize in context that we're 10% of worldwide emissions and that if we don't keep cheap coal uh, in other places in the ground, uh, then we will lose this battle for this planet. And um, that's why there's growing bipartisan support for increasing U.S. exports of nuclear energy te technologies and expertise, uh, because that offers a real possibility for the, the development of the, or for the developing world to avoid using that really dirty and dangerous fuel. Mr. Goff, what are the current roadblocks to exporting U.S. Te uh, nuclear technologies and expertise, and what reforms could help address those roadblocks? Um, well, we need to have certain agreements in place for different countries. So for countries that we already have a one, two, three agreement, you know, we can export those technologies. Then it's making sure that we have the right uh, support mechanisms to be able to export those. Do we have the right financing packages? Uh, we have ex the Export-Import Bank uh, can help with financing. Uh, but there are certain things we still can't do necessarily that other countries can do when they're going to export. Uh, especially, say, equity. We don't have a good way for the U.S. government to provide equity financing for some of those exports to different countries that are very important for, you know, it's very important for those countries to have some equity financing. So making sure we have the right financing packages, I think it's very important. Uh, I think we also need to make sure that we deploy successfully in the United States. It's very, you know, most countries don't want to build first of a kind. They want to see it operating in the country of origin first. So we got to make sure that we can deploy successfully, but also make sure that we have right financing packages as well internationally. Are, are you aware of existing proposals to deal with the, uh, our inability to provide equity in the way you described? Did you say that again? I'm sorry. Are you aware of existing proposals to address this issue about providing equity that you described? I, I have heard of various things being bounced around, but not aware of a specific proposal out there. Well. That's very helpful to me, and I'll, I'll look for one myself. There is bipartisan recognition in both chambers of Congress that common sense permitting reforms are needed to boost energy security and reduce pollution. While nuclear energy has been a clean, uh, secure, reliable, maybe the safest source of energy for decades and helps to stabilize our energy systems, the NRC's legacy environmental review processes have contributed to excessive process to build new nuclear. Uh, Dr. Goff, the draft Modernized Nuclear Reactor Environmental Reviews Act takes steps to reform the process for conducting environmental assessments to allow broader usage and potentially add new categorical exclusions. Do you believe these are good approaches? Would they be effective? And what else needs to be done to enable more rapid environmental reviews? Thanks, sir. Um, I think we do need to make sure that we have a process that's in place. You know, we have the new, uh, National Environmental Policy Act that we are addressing the environmental impacts, but make sure that we do it in a process that's very efficient, not too duplicative, uh, so that it doesn't become the, the lynch, you know, the slowest portion of the process. So things that we can do to, you know, to make sure that we're doing that process efficiently and effectively, I think are very important. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not the Department of Energy doesn't control that aspect of it, so I guess I won't necessarily speak on yeah. I'll share one of my frustrations is that, you know, we do the same analysis on the same process 
in every single district court in the country, it doesn't make any sense. And it really hand, handcuffs us. I'm looking for ways to make sure that we don't do that anymore, not with just respect to nuclear, but with respect to deploying all energy um, in the country. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the hearing, and I yield back.